let us look now how to set up the experiment for determining within lab long-term reproducibility from full standard deviation. And again, we will make a graph. And again, we will have samples. on one axis and suppose we again have four samples and now on the other axis we again have days but this time we need more days and we need them certainly spread over a long time period. So oh, let us take, for example, nine different days. And again, we analyze each sample, but now we do not analyze the samples on the same day, but we will spread out the analysis across a number of days. And let's assume that sample number one was, was analyzed on day one, on day four, and on day eight. Sample number two was analyzed on day two, day four, day six, and day nine. Sample number three was analyzed on day one, day three, day five, and day seven. And finally, sample number four was analyzed on day three, day six, day eight. So, we see now that on each day different samples were analyzed and also on each day only one analysis was done. But each of the samples got analyzed across a long time period because the time between each consecutive pair of days can be a few weeks so that this whole time period can easily be maybe half a year or even a year. So it will really be a long-term reproducibility standard deviation. But now with each sample again we can make quite few measurements, not so many. But since we average across all these measurements, eventually our pooled standard deviation statistically will be quite reliable. And again, of course, the averaging here comes from the fact that we have somewhat different samples and obviously different days. Let us look now how the calculation of within lab long-term reproducibility from pooled standard deviation can be done in practice. And we will again look at this on an example and this time it will be protein content determination by the Kjeldal method. We see here now that we have several samples altogether and each of these samples has been measured on several different days and those days are separated quite far apart from each other so that up to half a year time is uh, involved in this determination and here we can see the results of those determinations that were obtained for these several samples and again it is useful to first of all calculate the standard deviation for each of these samples and then the n minus 1 values and then the products of n minus 1 to standard deviation squared and then finally we can calculate the pooled standard deviation according to this formula. So this time we will organize these data in columns because this is more reasonable with this arrangement of data. Standard deviations in grams per 100 gram. And I will also put here sample numbers. 
So for sample one, it will be like this. For sample two, we get this one. For sample three, like this. For sample four, this one. And for sample five, our standard deviation will be like this. Now n minus one. For sample one, it's two. Sample two also two, sample three also two, sample four also two, and sample five it's one. And now these products n minus one multiplied by standard deviation squared. And here we can now copy. And again, as we saw in the case of repeatability calculation, we can now calculate the pool standard deviation as square root of the sum of all these components divided by the sum of the n minus 1 values, which as I explained will be exactly equal to this value here. So, within lab, long-term reproducibility pool standard deviation will be here. Square root sum of all these components divided by the sum of all n minus 1 values. And the unit, of course, is gram per 100 grams. So... And this can now be used conveniently for characterizing the procedure or for uncertainty estimation using the Nordest approach. And it's a reliable standard deviation because it has been obtained over a long time period and also with different samples, which means averaging. And the number of degrees of freedom in this particular case is altogether 9, which is the sum of these values here. And of course, if the laboratory continues working in this field, then it's very useful to collect more and more data, either to reanalyze these samples if it is still possible, or to collect more data so that to make this standard deviation estimate still more reliable.